So good morning. My name is Harold Scoggins and I'm the fire chief of the Seattle Fire Department. I want to thank Mayor Harold for joining us this morning at today's event. I also like to acknowledge Mike Haynes, the interim general manager of Seattle City Light for being here this morning along with many members of his team that worked with our team to actually make this happen today. I also like to thank finance and administrative services our fleet mechanics and just all the folks who really worked hard to make this happen today. Today we also have with us the Department of Ecology and Washington State Patrol and Hughes Fire Equipment to really um, announce the operation of this vehicle. We're excited to share the launch of the department's new energy response unit and it will be called Energy One. Seattle is the only city in the nation where the city utility and the fire department are working together to make sure energy fires are fought efficiently and with the most effective tools. In 2014, we partnered with Seattle City Light to more effectively fight fires in substations and underground high voltage equipment. Vault fires occur in confined spaces and often in involve high voltage equipment, creating a dangerous scenario for firefighters. These types of fires are rare, but can cause catastrophic damage to the infrastructure, potentially causing widespread power outages, and none of us want to see that. For example, in 2022, we had 22 vault fire responses in the city of Seattle, and so far this year we have had three. Power 25 responded to 31 energy-related fires in 2022, and so far seven this year. Before 2018, our standard procedure was to keep the area clear and wait for the fire to burn itself out, often causing costly damage to the infrastructure. This partnership involved new training for our firefighters that was funded by our utility partner, Seattle City Light, retrofitting our old truck with carbon dioxide canisters to be capable of extinguishing electrical fires with carbon dioxide. Today, we are replacing Power 25 with the new energy response unit, the most capable apparatus in the nation. I'll say that again the most capable apparatus in the nation for extinguishing these type of fires. It has an 11,000 pound tank for storing liquid carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide works, works by robbing fire of oxygen and prevents firefighters from having to enter confined spaces to put a fire out. It's safe and it's effective. With 600 feet of hose, and just to give you perspective, that's two football fields, 600 feet of hose, the energy response unit can access every substation and underground vault in the city of Seattle. That's really important to note. This new capability also means we can provide mutual aid to our neighboring fire agencies. So if help is needed around King County, please call us, we're here to help. Most importantly, by responding quickly and safely, to high energy incidents, we can prevent major power outages and infrastructure loss here in the city of Seattle. When we do our job well, these incidents go unnoticed. And that's how we like to operate in the Seattle Fire Department. Now I'd like to invite Mayor Harrow up to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief Scoggins. I want to begin by apologizing personally for being a few minutes late. My, my mother and father, who were city employees, raised me to always be early, not on time. And so when I'm late, I always feel badly. Thank you for your patience, everybody. I'm excited, extremely excited to be here to talk about really one Seattle at its best. When I, had take, when I took, took office uh, some time ago, I asked our leaders, uh, our outstanding leaders, to go back to the basics and some of the things we must do, which is protect people, make sure they are safe. And this, this effort to launch our Seattle Fire Department's energy response unit sort of epitomizes where we're trying to head as a city. I'm very proud to be here at Fire Station 25 with a, a, an outstanding history of serving the city of Seattle. 
So this, this new unit is a collaboration between our fire department and Seattle City Light, and quite, as I said earlier, it exemplifies what we're trying to do as a city. We're realizing that internal systems become criti becomes critically important on how our different departments and offices work together to provide the kind of optimal service that certain our residents and our businesses and our employers and employees deserve. Uh, it shows how if we work together on a common goal, realizing some of the dangers and some of the uh, events that we can anticipate, knowing that they will occur when we work together to achieve uh, outcomes, certain outcomes, and we think outside of the box, even if no one else is doing it, we can get to where we want to get. And so that's why I'm exceptionally proud today. So this new unit will help minimize the impact of power outages for residents and businesses throughout our entire city. Quite candidly, this is cutting edge. This is innovative public safety work that I'm very proud to say we are leading here in Seattle with these outstanding departments. As the chief said, we're the only city in the nation with a partnership between the city utility and the fire department coordinating these efforts, implementing best practices uh, in this field. In 2018, you may recall that the fire department formed the energy response team and partnered with Seattle City Light to train on extinguishing fires in electrical substations and underground vaults. And so that sort of became a foundation of the work that you're seeing today. So this continued partnership between City Light and our fire department will help us deliver essential services, providing uh, these kinds of preventative work and actual uh, action-oriented work toward critical infrastructure and, quite frankly, to prioritize public safety. This is our top charter responsibility, as you've heard me say before. The energy response team is the most capable in the nation for responding to all energy-related fires, anything from electrical substations uh, critical to our city's infrastructure to lithium-ion battery fires and consumer devi devices and those kinds of situations that we anticipate will occur. So today we are unveiling the most capable apparatus for fighting electrical fires in substations and underground vaults, and I hope you'll stay for the demonstration of this unit's capabilities. I have, I'm ready because I have my earplugs. I heard, I heard it makes a little bit, bit of noise. But again, I want to thank, uh, from the bottom of my heart, the fine leaders at Seattle City Light and the Seattle Fire Department, the administrative staff, and certainly the ground floor workers doing this hard work, the people out here every single day, the labor organizations and the uh, worker bees, if you will, making sure all this happens. Really a coordinated effort from the bottom up and everyone in between, and very proud to stand here as mayor unveiling this. So with that, it's absolutely my pleasure to introduce uh, the Interim General Manager, Mike Haynes, from Seattle City Light. Mike. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. Uh, thanks to all the City Lighters here to see this awesome demonstration, this, this fantastic piece of machinery that we are partnering with Seattle Fire on. Uh, super proud to be here representing the utility. And as, as, we, as we do at City Light, as we do at the City of Seattle, we're leading with safety. This, uh, this, this, uh, when we embarked on this partnership with the fire department almost six years ago, uh, the goal was to enhance safety, efficiently, efficiently fight these energy-based fires in vaults and substations, and there's very few technologies that, that can do that. This, this is the latest and greatest, and we're, we're really proud to be part of this partnership. As we move more closer to an electrified future at, at the city of Seattle, and part of the mayor's main initiatives and part of the state and the national initiative to electrify, uh, to decarbonize, it becomes more and more important that we have the capability to deal with the electrified future that involves more batteries, more electrical infrastructure downtown, uh, as we move away from natural gas and other fossil fuels. Uh, the, the risk and propensity for these types of energy-related fires gets greater. Um, we are now prepared, uh, as, as the mayor said, the most prepared uh, city in the nation to deal with these types of emergencies. We've learned many things over the last five or six years, and, and the truck here behind uh, the cameras is testimony to a lot of partnerships that started back in 2016. And what you have behind me is the, is the modern, best practice, current technology for doing the great work that we're talking about doing here today. The investment expands our capability as a city, as a utility, and a Seattle Fire Department, again, to deal with these emerging issues, to deal with recurrent issues that happen in vaults. And it's important that as we're dealing with vault fires and these types of energy-related disasters that we are very efficient in doing that. 
Many parts of the, uh, the nation that deal with these types of underground fires actually let them burn until they extinguish themselves. That's not an acceptable practice here in Seattle because we're, our, our goal is to be efficient, extinguish, make safe, and get people back on energy as quickly as possible. And, th and this truck is going to enable us to do that. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it back to Chief Scoggins, and he's going to introduce our subject matter expert. You know, as the chief of the Seattle Fire Department, I'm incredibly proud of every one of our firefighters and professional staff in the department, and they all do amazing work each and every day. And today we're here at Fire Station 25, one of our busiest stations in the department, where the engine runs over 4,000 calls, the ladder truck over 3,000 calls, and the aid car over 6,000 calls. So this is a very busy firehouse with already a lot to do and willing to take on more. And it's important that we say thank you to them. And that's where this project came from, out of one of our busiest firehouses, led by Captain Chris Green, who is retiring after 30 years of service to, the, to this community. Spent many of those years right here at Fire Station 25 here on Capitol Hill. But always leaning in, always steady, always trying to do better to serve this community. So right now I'm going to invite up Captain Chris Green to tell you a little bit more about this energy response unit. Captain Green. You know, I shouldn't be nervous, um, but uh, it's weird. I'm, I'm, I am a little bit, uh, the station, the city means so much to me and this program. If you could see what it took to get us here, it's incredible. We all know what it takes to move the needle a little bit uh, in, in, in preparing for energy-related emergencies and just understanding what they are. That's a lift. You just don't understand how much energy it takes just to understand what you're dealing with. This takes years. Um, this partnership between City Light and, and Seattle Fire started many years ago with, uh, with an incident that didn't really go probably the way it should have gone. But from that, we snatched a real victory. And that's, that was, that was the, the birth of this energy response unit, the energy response team that functions out of Fire Station 25. With this rig, the things we didn't used to be able to do was handle some of the largest utility space fires in the city. There's not a utility space fire in this city that we can't handle right now. We've got the reach, we've got the capacity. Those are two things that needed to change with the new rig that we built out and we did it perfectly. Um, when you have these utility space fires, there's a long time there's been, there's been an, an ethos that you just let them burn. This is incredibly expensive, but this is an ethos that's been adopted and accepted by the fire service at large for over 50, 60 years, and it's cost us a lot of money. Not here anymore, not in Seattle. We go after utility space fires while they're still fully energized. We do that with this rig, with CO2, with voltage-rated PPE, but most importantly, with a partnership with Seattle City Light. I see my brethren here with us right now today. All our guys from Seattle City Light, these are people that I've worked with for nearly a decade. They are like family. This is, this is our crew. Station 25 and Seattle City Light. Uh, there, there is a love and there's a kinship here that uh, it is special, it is tremendous. Um, we have a demo for you. Because I could go on forever and talk about how much I love these guys, right? Because I'm leaving and I'm going to miss them all so much. But what this city is going to get out of this rig, any energy-related emergency that happens in this city, whether it be lithium-ion, whether it be charging stations for EVs that are now getting, getting driven underground, all of those energy-related emergencies, we are ready for them. Because this energy-related team was in place back in 2014 when we started this, we were not surprised by lithium-ion. Take a look at the rekindle rate in this city. It's not happening with our energy infrastructure. We're just not seeing that because we were ready. That's a reflection of this team's preparedness and readiness to deal with all energy-related emergencies. So from charging stations, lithium-ion battery emergencies, substations, switch gears, underground utilities, solar, you name it. This team handles that, and we do that with partnership with Seattle City Light. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and 
and being with us today and celebrating with us. This is, this is one hell of a rig, everybody. And we got a great demonstration for you. Uh, any quick questions before we get this demo going? Yes, sir. No, see, that's a very good question. So the question is, are we going to run out of capacity in any one of these utility spaces for Seattle City Light? The fact is, that was one of the first gaps we tried to close. With the old rig, we had about 1,000 pounds of liquid CO2. And that gave us a capacity that was a certain amount, a little over 2,000 cubic feet. This thing has 10,000 pounds of CO2 on it. Our capacity is, is it exceeds the most amount we would use in a utility space by three folds. So I don't see that happening. That's the reality. Uh, the reach was also an issue. The old rig, 125 feet of reach. We know that we have vaults and things like that inside of buildings, deep in buildings. We got 600 feet with this. Our deepest utility space on the on city light side is about 550 feet in. We're at 600. Uh, we didn't guess, is my point. We did calculations. We knew what we needed, and that's what we built. And uh, we've got, again, we've got a demonstration, as you can see, that CO2 flowing, and, and uh, it it is the preferred medium to take down energy uh, emergencies, especially ones that are fully energized. Again, I can't say that enough. Everywhere else in the country, they, put, they, they have to de-energize before they put those fires out. And that means those things burn. That's hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage to these spaces. And it means time of us not having power. Not in this city, not with this rig in place, and not with this team. So then with time, I'm sorry, with the time that's one of the factors here, how quickly, once you fire this thing up, can it knock down a fire? Seconds. We snuffed out a 3,000 volt arc a month ago. 3,000 volts. That's what this thing can do. That's a very technical conversation, but in a nutshell, you had a 3,000 volt arc, this thing put it out. You ain't never seen anything like that. Uh, sorry, Jay, one more quick one, because you mentioned we rely on batteries and we're, yeah. you know, a lot of people move into electric cars. How effective would that be if we have a, let's say, a lithium ion car fire on I-5? So on I-5, we wouldn't be using this to suppress that, but all of the tools needed to handle that emergency, those EV fires, those are handled with all the equipment and the training that these people have on that rig. A more problematic area is gonna be inside of parking garages and stuff like that. That's where this thing really shines. That's where you're gonna see this thing going after it. But it, like any program, it's the training that was invested in these members. That's the strength of the program, right? If these guys don't know what they're doing and understand baseline energy, where are we? So through that nozzle, we got 300 pounds of CO2 flowing in one minute. There's not a nozzle like that anywhere in the country in this mobile setting that puts these out. This is why we're taking down energized utility spaces. Nowhere else in the world, to my knowledge, and believe me, I've looked. I would have loved to have found somebody else who could help us put this together. The reality is, that's Seattle, and everybody comes to us now. As a matter of fact, St. Louis was here not too long ago through Ameren Energy. They came out, went through our class back in 2019, they ended up building a different type of machine, but it was our energy rig and our training that put those guys through that. And we're doing the same thing all over the country. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.